Now let us go back and uh, look at the two polynomials that we looked at and uh, let us apply these uh, uh, what to say conditions to the two polynomials right. So, what was d 1 of is it was s cube uh, plus uh, 2 s square plus 3 s plus 1 correct I hope everyone agrees right. So, now how do I uh, construct the routes array I write s cube s square s power 1 s power 0 right. So, that is what I do then I take the first two rows right then I start filling the coefficients right what are the coefficients 1, 2, 3, 1 right that is it I have exhausted my coefficients ok. Now, if I want to go to the s power 1 row what do I do I multiply 2 with 3 I get 6 I multiply 1 and 1 I get 1. So, 6 minus 1 is going to be 5 and I divide 5 by 2. So, I get 5 by 2 ok. So, would I have any other uh, uh, entry in the s power 1 row? No, because there is nothing to the right of the column 3 and 1 that is it I stop here ok. Now, I go to the s power 0 row ok. So, now then I consider the s square and s power 1 row right for the s power 0 row. So, what do I do? I do the same process 5 by 2 times 1 minus 2 times you know when you do not have an entry you take it as 0 ok. That is once not the first entry, but then the other entries right. When you have reached a s power 1 row you do not have an entry here right. So, you take, take it as a null entry. So, 5 by 2 times 1 minus 2 times 0 is 5 by 2 and then 5 by 2 you divide by 5 by 2 itself what will you get? You will get 1. So, now let us look at the first column of the road array right what can we observe? No sign changes right because you one can observe that all entries are positive right. So, this implies that all three roots of d 1 of s have negative real paths. So, I hope it is clear right how we applied it here right. So, please note you know I am not calculating the exact roots per se right did I ask you to solve the polynomial for the roots no right that is what I am reiterating here right at this stage we are only interested in figuring out the location of the roots ok. So, we did not solve for the roots right. So, I am we are only concluding that all three roots are in the left of complex plane where we did we need to solve the equation right to get the exact uh, values of the roots ok. So, that is that is uh, the first uh, polynomial. So, now let us go to the second polynomial. So, what happened in d 2 of s we wrote it as s q uh, plus 2 s square uh, plus uh, 1 sorry plus s I can call it as s right uh, plus uh, 3 right we just uh, swap the uh, s power 1 and constant uh, term coefficients right. So, let us uh, do the routes uh, array construction once again s cube s square s power 1 s power 0 right. So, we have once again we fill in the first uh, two rows 1, 2, 1 and 3 right. Now, we want to calculate uh, for the s power 1 row what do we do? We multiply 2 with 1 uh, subtract 1 and 3 what are we going to get? Minus 1 right minus 1 I divide by 2 I will get minus 1 by 2 ok and that is it right I do not I, I, I have exhausted my coefficients. So, we come to the s power 0 row for the s power 0 row we consider these two rows right. So, minus 1 by 2 times 3 is going to be minus 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 minus of 2 times null entry is going to be just minus 3 by 2 and minus 3 by 2 divided by minus 1 by 2 is going to be 3 plus 3 ok. So, we immediately uh, look look at the first column of the roads array what can we see there are two sign changes how come there are two sign changes you see that from 2 to minus 1 by 2 is one sign change from minus 1 by 2 to 3 is another sign change ok. So, that is how we get two sign changes here ok. So, this implies that there are Oh, sorry ok 
two sign changes in the first column of the road survey. So, this implies that what does it imply? So, this implies that there are two roots in RHP and obviously, where should the third root be? In LHP, right. So, plus one root in LHP, okay. Yes, please. No, why not? Because, yes, that is a good point, okay. How come, you know, like in this example, we are sure that it is not in the on the j omega axis, okay. So, let us argue from two perspectives, okay. So, that is a good, good question, okay. Let me repeat his question, okay. So, uh, if you if you logically apply whatever we have learned till now, you know, like what the only conclusion we can draw based on the facts that we have written under the routes criteria is that there are two sign changes. So, two roots should be in the right of plane. So, this is a third order polynomial, right. So, totally there are going to be three roots. So, two roots are in the right of complex plane. So, we are left with only one root, okay. Where does the one remaining root lie? Obviously, uh, there are two ways to eliminate the j omega axis. First is by looking at the routes array, you see that there are no zero entries, okay. So, as I told you, tomorrow we will look at special cases, you know, that rules out the j omega axis. Second thing, you can look at the polynomial itself. See, this is a third order polynomial, right. You have one remaining root. So, if I want the one remaining root to be on the j omega axis, right, I can have two possibilities. Either it should be the origin or it should have be a complex conjugate pole on the complex conjugate pair on the j omega axis, right. Complex conjugate pair is ruled out. Why? Because I have only one remaining root. Complex conjugate pair means I need two remaining roots, right. That is gone. And so, the only possibility which is left is at the origin. If you have a root of a polynomial of the origin, the constant term is 0. Is the constant term 0 here? No, right. So, that is the second line of argument. So, I, I, we are ruling out j omega axis. Because we got two, yeah, we got one root, you may have, but once again, that is a good point. Let us say we have an example, there is only one sign change, right. Let us say a third order polynomial, we have only one sign change. Question is, I am left with two remaining roots, I can still have uh, may, let us say a complex conjugate pair on the j omega axis possible, but still in that example if you in your first column of the road survey if you do not have a 0 that you are you rule out that uh, possibility, okay. We are, as I told you we are going to do that tomorrow, right. So, yeah, okay. I think uh, that is a good question, okay. I hope you did not follow that uh, uh, result, right, yeah, okay. So, uh, let me write down the general uh, road stability criteria, then we will go back to um, our uh, what to say example that we are doing it last class and completed, okay. So, let me write down the routes stability criteria, okay. So, you see that whatever uh, we, we have been discussing till now applies to any polynomial, right. You can encounter polynomial in polynomials in any application. Now, we are going to apply it to control theory, okay. So, I hope you can see how mathematics is applied to our uh, our uh, subject of discussion right which is control design right so we will now see how uh, we are going to uh, apply it to our thing okay so consider a system it can be open loop or closed loop right whose transfer function is of the form n of s divided by d of s, okay. Let us say we assign whatever symbol we want, okay. So, consider a system whose transfer function is n of s or d of s. It can be just the plant, it can be the open loop transfer function, it can be also the closed loop transfer function, okay. So, any any system, okay. But for control design, you know for us by and large we will consider the closed loop transfer function, okay, because that is what makes sense for us, right. So, in general consider a system whose transfer function is n of s divided by d of s. This system would be Bibo stable ok. That means, uh, some people will call it as asymptotically stable.
okay if and only if okay if and i double f means if and only if right so uh, so that indicates necessity and sufficiency okay if and only if a all the coefficients of d of s are non zero and of the same sign and b the first column of the routes array constructed using the coefficients of d of s okay oh i should say first column right i'm sorry i missed the word first here the first column of the roads array constructed using the coefficient of uh, d of s has all entries being non zero and of the same sign okay that's the those are the two conditions okay so once again please note that bibo stability or asymptote bibo stability means you know like you can't have uh, poles on the imaginary axis also right that's ruled out so i can't i can't say i will have a zero in the first column no i should have non zero entries in the first column and they should all be of the same sign okay so those are the uh, two conditions as far as the route stability criteria is concerned okay this is what is called as route stability uh, criteria okay fine so uh, we'll go back and now uh, apply this uh, uh, route stability criteria to uh, the uh, what to say the problem that we were doing okay so to complete this okay so i'll just take a couple of minutes to do that right so is this clear to everybody <coughs> okay so let me scroll down okay i i'm just going to this uh, problem i i will edit this files appropriately but we are doing this problem right where we were looking at the pi uh, controller and we figured out that the closed loop characteristic equation is s cube plus kp plus 1 s plus ki equals 0 right so now uh, the roots of this polynomial will be the closed loop poles so do you think the pi controller will stabilize this closed loop system no why not i don't even need to go any further right why not the necessary condition is not satisfied right so we can immediately see that so this shows that the coefficient of s squared is 0 right so this implies that uh, there are no values of kp and ki can stabilize the closed loop system okay that is the implication of this uh, result okay correct so the pi controller will not work so now you see why we digressed and learned the route stability criteria and came here right so you can see that uh, our analysis becomes uh, more uh, simple right so now as the next step let's try the pd controller okay because for this system Uh, let's go ahead and try the pd controller okay so pd controller means its transfer function is kp plus kds so we follow the same uh, framework okay so let's say then g of s uh, which is c of s times p of s please remember what was the plant transfer function here the plant transfer function was 1 by s square plus 1 okay that's the plant we started off with right so that's going to be equal to uh, kds plus kp divided by s squared plus 1 right so this implies the closed loop transfer function is going to be equal to g of s divided by 1 plus g of s h of s that's going to be equal to kds plus kp 
divided by s square plus 1 the whole thing divided by 1 plus k d s plus k p divided by s square plus 1 okay. and that is going to be equal to k d s plus k p the whole thing divided by s square plus k d s plus k p plus 1. Okay, so, that is what we have. So, uh, this implies that the closed loop characteristic equation is going to be equal to s square plus k d s plus k p plus 1. Okay. So, immediately we see that uh, this is a polynomial of order 2 right the closed loop system with a derivative con p d controller is still a second order uh, system. Okay. With this you know like immediately we see that as I discussed for polynomial still order 2 the necessary and sufficient condition is all coefficients must be non zero and of the same sign. Okay. So, this implies that the closed loop system would be stable oops would be bibo stable if and only if the all the coefficients must be non zero on the same sign right s square term the coefficient is plus 1 so already one coefficient is positive so we must have kd should be greater than 0 kp plus 1 should be greater than 0. So, this implies that k d greater than 0 and k p greater than minus 1 is the oops sorry is the feasible reason okay, for stability. Okay. So, uh, if I want to plot this in the controller parameter space, I will just stop with this plot, you know, like so. Uh, we have k p on the horizontal axis, let us say k d on the uh, in the vertical axis, right. So, how will I plot uh, k d greater than 0? k d greater than 0 is this half plane, right, is not it, right. How do I plot k p greater than minus 1? First, I draw k p equals minus 1 and any region to the right of it is going to be k p greater than minus 1 right. So, consequently the uh, feasible region is going to be the intersection of the two regions right correct this is the feasible region right this is what I called as a controller parameter space right. If I say calculate the feasible region in the controller parameter space this is what you need to do okay, for the controller space. fine. So, uh, as a very simple exercise for you to do consider the general uh, second order polynomial a naught s square plus a 1 s plus a 2 apply the Routh square array to that okay, and convince yourself that the necessary condition is also sufficient. Okay. You will see that the uh, first column will have a 1 a 2 sorry a naught a 1 and a 2. Okay. So, what was necessary will also become sufficient for polynomial still order 2 ok. So, that is the uh, what to say uh, criteria for the uh, for orders uh, polynomial still order 2 ok. So, is it clear?